All right, so moving now to uh, Asia. Um, and sort of like the big question with Asia is, you look at, well, you look at China now, and China is obviously one of the most developed countries in the world. Um, and, um, and it was for much of its uh, history. Um, and so when we're thinking about the Industrial Revolution, the question that gets thrown around is, why not China? Why was it not China that industrialized before England? Given that they were, for most of their history, richer, they're more organized and sort of like centrally located. Um, they have this long history of technological innovation. So why is it uh, not China? And so we'll talk a little bit about that, what the theories are. Um, of course, again, this is history, and we have a sample size of one in terms of times it was run. So, you know, it could just be idiosyncratic. It could just be that this one in our little universe, it was England. If we run the simulation, whatever, 10 more times, it would have been China all those times. Who knows? But there's a lot of theories about why China failed to industrialize when uh, England did. We'll go through those, and then we'll talk about the 20th century story, which is one of growth for many uh, East Asian uh, countries. And so we'll go, we'll go through that. Obviously, we're not going to be able to focus on, you know, all of Asia. We're primarily going to focus on China um, and, uh, and then in the 20th century, uh, East Asia. Okay. So as I mentioned, it's one of pre-industrial China is certainly more advanced than, uh, than England or Western Europe in many ways. So it has paper money way before Europe. It has some form of printing. It has gunpowder. Um, it has the compass. It's got uh, blast iron furnaces. Um, it has the spinning wheel. So it has all sorts of technologies that we associate with the Industrial Revolution, uh, you know, particularly that, that spinning wheel and that, those, those blast furnaces. Um, and it has, you know, this paper money that would help facilitate, you know, a market economy, but it just doesn't, you know, get that sustained innovation that comes to England with the industrial, uh, revolution. Here's just an example of the complexity that existed in China. Um, and, you know, this is just, you know, a very complex, uh, machine, um, that was there, you know, in, in, in 1000, uh, um, 86. And so, you know, Jared Diamond talks about this in Guns, Germs, and Steel, but it's like, if you were to go back, you know, in the 1400s or maybe 1300s or the 1200s, you're betting on what area is going to industrialize, what area is going to have the Industrial Revolution. For most of human history, you'd be betting on, uh, on China. Okay. Um, but somewhere around 1400, uh, China takes a step backwards. And there's some disagreement about this, but the general consensus is there's a bit of a step backwards in terms of dyna uh, dynamism, technological dynamism. Um, and there even is examples of technologies being forgotten. Okay. And then of course, by the time we get to the 1800s, uh, at a technological level, China is definitely behind uh, Western Europe. And Western Europe is it where Western European powers like England are able to you know, assert their dominance over China using superior uh, technology. Um, and it's really not until, as we'll, we'll talk about in the, uh, in the podcast this week, it's really not until um, you know, China you know, starts to grow in the 1980s um, that China sees, you know, sees a level of development comparable um, to, uh, to Europe. Okay, so what happened? So again, we'll have a bunch of different explanations. Um, you know, again, we're, we're kind of bucketing our explanations under culture, geography, and institutions. Um, and so there are cultural explanations out there. So Max Weber, um, you know, he of the Protestant work ethic uh, theory says, well, Confucianism is kind of not uh, compatible uh, with growth because you have some inventions that are opposed um, and, um, and really, you know, there's an ideal of adjusting yourself to nature rather than controlling nature. So, you know, in, in England, it's like we can harness nature to, uh, to better, uh, uh, to better, um, to better ourselves. Um, whereas that was, you know, that's not really what Confucianism, uh, the ideal in Confucianism, which is kind of to, you know, adjust yourself uh, to, uh, to nature, okay? 
All right. And then there's kind of this, this idea of traditionalism, kind of, you know, respecting that what came from the past and maybe not rocking the boat as much, trying to innovate, trying to change things that is kind of laid out in, uh, in this thesis. Okay. You can just read, I'm not going to read it all, but just saying that there are cultural arguments um, for the stagnation out there. Again, in this class, we're going to mostly shy away from cultural arguments and focus on institutional uh, arguments. Okay. There are some geographic uh, arguments. This primarily has to do with coal. As I've kind of outlined in the previous lecture, I don't really buy this argument. So uh, kind of the explanation that's given, well, okay, Ch why China didn't, didn't get the Industrial Revolution is they didn't have a lot of coal. And where, you know, England is essentially sitting on a mountain of coal. Um, again, as I, as I outlined previously, the reason I'll buy this is that initial innovation, that initial industry that gets that sustained innovation, you know, is done without coal. Um, so again, I'm not, you know, if your explanation is why China stagnated is they didn't have coal, I, I think that had China had sustained innovation, they could have found power in, in other ways. All right, take a break there before we get into the meat of the institutional uh, argument.